Attention gamers! As you know I've recently finished a 3 month binge of hardcore classic WoW and while there's more series in Azeroth brewing, I decided to hold the occasional L by making League content and overall it's been going. Poorly. But I think the reason my WoW series was successful was that I always did things my way. It's just simply a fun series where he did a bunch of like, I mean, to be fair, really dumb shit. So I decided to take that mentality into League and go against the way the game is supposed to be played only to realize I've struck gold and created games where my own teammates are going 12 and 0 with more than 10 CS per minute while the enemy top is looking for bleach to drink while their team is flaming them. The only thing is unlike WoW where the community floods you with kind words when you pave your own way. The League community is less open to new ideas. So I've decided to use Tappan.gg to help me change the League meta because in addition to having the top duos, coaches, and cool people to play with, these players are the closest thing I've found to the WoW community and in less time than it takes to find a League match I had my duo where I said yip yip then got in the Tappan Discord to let them know what's about to go down. Which was to turn top lane into the duo oh. lane. Sounds good. <laughs> and completely screw over the random bot laner on our team. I mean, they'll be mad, like, 100%, but yeah, it is. But Funja had the perfect plan if we got flamed. Okay, if this guy uh, flames or something, we'll tell you your first time playing League. <laughs> and since the meta is treated like a law in this game, I knew Bubblicious Gum-flavored Teemo would not be expecting a harp solo at level 1, so we waved goodbye to half his health, and then my tap and teammate prepped the Goon Gale so that the next time that little buzzing Muppet stepped up to lane, he'd be hit with a flashy blue K-pop your asshole back to base combo. Oh. Oh baby, let's go! <laughs> the plan then turned into this. I think we should just not let him get to the lane. <laughs> and predictably so my bot laner was ready to tap out 3 minutes into the game because this goes against how she was taught how to play from the snooze fest known as worlds but while she had 12 farm, their Teemo only had 11 and I had a plan for how to make everyone happy. This started with me standing on the camera this lil bitch bumblebee just put down like I'm doing the muscle mommy step on me pose while really just zoning him so far away from the frozen wave that he's not even getting experience. Then I gave some positive reinforcement to our team's flight risk while acknowledging that she got 10 more farm in the same time that he got 0. Anyways the enemy got word that our jungler is into some kinky BDSM shit and now some jacked golden booger and a Bollywood producer are looking for her so I head down for protection you know make sure this mitosizing mucus doesn't make a move which lands me one proper fart from meeting my maker but luckily a gothic teddy and a properly timed blue song and we get an easy double. Oh my god Jesus man. Me and my hired windshitter are now continuing to make sure this Teemo can't play the game and the strategy is he'll do a bunch of fruit ninja stuff. Then I'll come in and take all the credit. And I'm thinking I'm a genius for this strat, but he tells me that this was once the actual meta. Yeah, uh, I think like before, like people uh, uh, like used to play this. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, the proper thing to do would be to take tower, but we're thinking it'll be easier to win if Timo quits, and it's a 4v5, so he leaves the whining wasp one shot, and then I post up to make sure he can't come back. Eventually the tower FFs and at this point Yone has an entire item on him so any encounter is going to be more lopsided than a bad tit job but I make sure that I'm still in attendance of the little honey keepers homicide. I am now like let's rotate mid and tell each other dad jokes. <laughs> that is a good one. But then we get rudely interrupted. Holy moly! So I ask if he's heard the one where the one becomes four and then the four become a dead bitch who learns not to interrupt me trying to build rapport with a guy I paid online to play video games with me. It was at this point when I got a call from Jarvan the third saying his son's gotten a bit of an ego from stomping a 2v1 bot lane all game so I was like what the hell do you want me to do about it, kill him? And he left me on read so I just assumed he'd be cool with it. So before 20 minutes we were pretty much 1v9. Oh, we got her. Uh, what? Uh, nah, baby. <laughs> no. Okay, got him. And even though I died. No, don't die! There was now a 3 level difference plus a 3 item difference between top laners while our ADC was still somehow higher level than theirs. 
I managed to steal enough undeserved kills that I could take that little Pepto Bismo puking shit stain and take him out myself before chasing away others and any time the bot laner that I stranded caught some strays I would make sure to defend her as my whole game plan was around Teemo rage quitting before she does. PSA this is silver so while we are taking Baron our jungler was taking a shit which meant things were about to get hairier than Bigfoot's ballsack but we got Baron we got Bollywood Robin Hood and their Teemo couldn't kill a Krug camp right now so we were good. At this point you would typically have to worry about a fed vein but my duo was properly nourished. And when our Annie chose to overextend worse than a ripped rubber band I was there to play my gold song slap around some hose and then tag in the tap and win twin to help make J4's last memory that of a mute harpist's ass. Siver despite being so abandoned in lane you could hear Sarah McLaughlin singing in the arms of an angel. She still felt like she could solo their team's Gosu but I knew that was false confidence so we were there to make sure it went smoothly. Our jungler was still farming pre-raid Biss out and Kalamazoo playing her full PvE game but it was cool because I could DJ any death which snowballed this shit into an utter blowout where my strategy left the enemy team appropriately unhappy with their top laner's performance. But I wanted to drive my point home so I told Tap and Tommy that I'd like his paid company for a bit longer as I wanted to prove that this works with double mages as well. I always choose to introduce myself in a way that makes their asshole pucker a bit you know hurt a mommy long leg into river and then watch her contemplate how to get back to lane quick enough to not miss her wave only to be forced into a dumbass decision where she dies for it. <laughs> then we make sure her whole experience in lane feels like this. To the point where even staying in the area just for the XP is not safe. Okay. <laughs> After a bit I noticed that others were being forced to adopt my new meta but we already had a fat advantage and so I just looked at them and said Renata you glad your top laner is threatening to rage quit me wahaha. <laughs> then we took the first tower before 9 minutes and I took a quick trip bot to make sure Inspector Gadget's tall wife was still contemplating never touching this game again. Meanwhile me and my new best friend were showing the power of a duo that plays together. Okay. Okay baby. Let's go. Anytime I was stuck in a bad situation like a force three way with two clowns he was there to bail me out and anytime he was about to get sporked by a salamander I would return the favor. No! <laughs> and after one more flashy kill, we flat out nuked the Nexus before the 20 minute mark and I think this sample size of 2 silver elo games is now enough for everyone to change the meta and to start playing this game however the hell they want. Thanks again to Tappan.gg for sponsoring this video and supplying me with the dankest teammates when I need someone not toxic to play league with. They are running a dank holiday sale right now and the best way to try it is through my link below. Rav out!